The pobble who has no toes is the happiest creature. The pobble who has no toes had once as many as we. When they said, "Some day you may lose them all," he replied, "Fish, fiddle dee dee," and his aunt Hobiska made him drink lavender water tinged with pink, for she said, "The world in general knows there's nothing so good for a pobble's toes." The pobble who has no toes swam across the Bristol Channel, but before he set out, he wrapped his nose in a piece of scarlet flannel. For his aunt Hobiska said, "No harm can come to his toes if his nose is warm, and it's perfectly known that a pobble's toes are safe, provided he minds his nose." The pobble swam fast and well, and when boats or ships came near him, he tinkledy blinkledy winkled the bell so that all the world could hear him, and all the sailors and admirals cried when they saw him nearing the further side. He has gone to fish for his aunt Obiska's runcible cat with crimson whiskers. But before he touched the shore, the shore of the Bristol Channel, a sea green porpoise carried away his wrapper of scarlet flannel, and when he came to observe his feet, formerly garnished with toes so neat, his face at once became forlorn on perceiving that all his toes were gone. And nobody ever knew from that dark day to the present, who so had taken the pobble's toes in a manner so far from pleasant, whether the shrimps or crawfish grey, or crafty mermaids stole them away. Nobody knew, and nobody knows how the pobble was robbed of his twice five toes. The pobble who has no toes was placed in a friendly park, and they rowed him back and carried him up. To his aunt Hobiska's park, and she made him a feast at his earnest wish of eggs and buttercups fried with fish. And she said, "It's a fact. The whole world knows that pobbles are happier without their toes."